Welcome to the Public Library of Steubenville and Jefferson Counties program on lighthouses in Ohio. We love our lighthouses. Not every state can boast about having them. Helping maritime captains navigate the Great Lakes for centuries, lighthouses mark coastlines and show safe entries to harbors. They are also popular among shoreline lovers for their unique beauty and photo opportunities. Why are we so fascinated with lighthouses? I'm fascinated personally because they're all different, they're beautiful, and they're located near many of my favorite places like the sea and various lakes. For others, they've been a beacon of light even before electricity. Originally, burning coal or even fires were used as the lamp or the source of light in a lighthouse. Lighthouses later made use of oil burning lamps and finally electric lamps in 1875. The structures continue to stand the test of time. Located on coasts and cliffs, lighthouses are subject to storms, high winds, and other extreme conditions. Yet many remain viable and strong even today. America's oldest operational lighthouse is the Boston Lighthouse on Little Brewster Island in Boston, Massachusetts, built in 1716. There are 60 historical lighthouses surrounding Lake Erie. For over a century, their beacons of light served the Great Lakes shipping region. Lighthouses stand as beacons of safety and security, and perhaps this is why they appeal to so many people, even land-loving folks. All of them have stories from the past. Many of the lighthouses have been restored to their former glory through the efforts of private citizens. Others have been taken over by the state and operated as museums. Some have been destroyed, unfortunately, by the elements or extremely vandalized. In this program, we have chosen to highlight these eight most popular lighthouses in our state. We will take a brief look at each one and share information about their unique features. For additional information, refer to the websites we have included. And there's always Google if you want to find information that we haven't given you. Each location has varied hours and costs involved, if any. Most websites list the current times and days open, but it's always good to double check by calling a contact number that you can find, usually on the website. My personal favorite, the Marblehead Lighthouse, is the oldest continuously operating lighthouse on the Great Lakes. It has been featured on a U.S. postage stamp, appeared on Ohio's license plates, and is now part of the Ohio State Parks system. Etching its place in history, the Marblehead Light is the oldest lighthouse in continuous operation on the Great Lakes. The lighthouse tours are offered daily, weather permitting, from noon to 3.40 p.m. The construction of a replica of the 1870 U.S. life-saving station was completed in 2016. The present keeper's house was constructed in 1880 and was home to 16 keepers and their families. The lighthouse and museums are now open for the summer of the 2021 season. Erected in 1896 and originally at the mouth of the Portage River, the Port Clinton Lighthouse sat on private property for six decades until she was lovingly restored and brought to her new home at Waterworks Park in 2016. The Port Clinton Lighthouse is the last remaining timber frame pier light on Lake Erie. Once common on our inland seas, only four of these unique structures remain on the Great Lakes today. A replica of the Lightkeeper's Boathouse is also located in the Waterworks Park, along with a new 2020 Lightkeeper sculpture on display through fall. Climb the wooden spiral staircase to the lantern room and view the fully functioning Fresnel lens, then walk out onto the gallery deck for a spectacular view of Lake Erie and its famous islands. 
the lens will shine a bright light out into Lake Erie and make the boathouse visible from about four miles away. Florida designer um, Dan Spinella built and installed the custom replica lens. The Fairport Harbor West Breakwater Light, one of my personal favorites again, was built in 1925 and sits in Fairport Harbor, Ohio at the mouth of the Grand River. It was constructed to replace the original Fairport Harbor Lighthouse, which now serves as a marine museum. The original Fairport Harbor Lighthouse protected the shore and directed mariners for hundreds of years before falling into disrepair. The light is automated and closed to the public. However, it is possible to walk out along the breakwater to view the structure and grounds. It was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1992. The Fairport Lighthouse and Marine Museum has several exhibits that highlight the history connected to Fairport and its lighthouse. Another great place to visit if you are in this area is the Headland Dunes Nature Preserve. It is a 25-acre preserve just to the east of Headlands Beach State Park. I've visited there several times and can hardly believe I'm in Ohio. It's such a unique place. The sand dunes just offshore of Lake Erie are rare in Ohio because most of the adjacent area has been developed. Surprisingly, a number of plants that originated on the Atlantic coast grow in this small nature preserve. This is a great area to visit in the summer, and I've enjoyed seeing the beach in both lighthouses, which are very close to each other, and not far from Steubenville. Tour the South Bass Island Lighthouse. Learn about its history and climb the stairs to take in a great view of Putin Bay from the top of the tower, which is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. This lighthouse at the island's southern tip is usually open for hours, um, on select dates during June through October. Unlike the more typical designs of the day, the lighthouse consists of a large two and a half story red brick dwelling with an attached 12 foot square tower. South Bass Island Lighthouse is currently home to OSU research and academic staff. The lighthouse and grounds opened to the public in 20. 07 when the university decided to start offering tours during the summer. Putin Bay is an Ohio village on South Bass Island as well. Um, Perry's Victory and International Peace Memorial is a huge column commemorating the 1812 Battle of Lake Erie. The original 1877 Vermilion Lighthouse served its community for half a century before being damaged in an ice storm. The current Vermilion Lighthouse is a replica of the original. The light is still operational and accessible via the beach. It's a popular place to sit and admire the lake. The Inland Seas Maritime Museum is near the mouth of the Vermilion River. The lighthouse is illuminated by a 200 watt incandescent light bulb with a fifth order Fresnel lens. The pilot house was added to the museum and allows visitors to step back in time and imagine what it's like to be on board standing behind a massive wooden steering wheel with no land visible. The first lighthouse to be built in Ashtabula was completed in 1836. It was in use until 1876 when it was replaced due to construction of new docks. The second lighthouse had a fourth order Fresnel and was made out of wood. This lighthouse was used until 1905. In 1916, the Ashtabula River was widened and new docks were completed. At this time, the present lighthouse was constructed. A distant view of Ashtabula Lighthouse can be seen from Ashtabula Maritime Museum. The lighthouse was manned by the U.S. Coast Guard until 1973 when it was automated. In 1928, a massive ice storm coated the lighthouse in several feet of ice. The keepers on duty had to thaw the door and then tunnel through five feet of ice to get out. The old keeper's quarters is now a maritime museum that is supposed to have some very unique items in, in its collection. The Lorraine Lighthouse is located one half mile off Lorraine in Lake Erie and can only be reached by boat. Although it was built 
1917. It was threatened with demolition in 1965 when the Coast Guard no longer needed its services. A group of community leaders came together to lead the campaign to save the lighthouse. Restoration work was done after being vacant for years before the public was invited to tour. The lighthouse is open during the summer months only because of its location. A great way to celebrate a special occasion and see one of Ohio's most beautiful sunsets is to go on one of the Lorraine Lighthouse Sunset Wine Dinners, which includes a boat ride to and from the lighthouse and a brief guided tour of the lighthouse as well as a dinner. They started on Tuesday, June 15, 2021 and continue every Tuesday through September 14, 2021, weather permitting. Just north of the mouth of the Cuyahoga River sits the Cleveland West Breakwater Lighthouse, which was built in 1911. The lighthouse is located at the end of a four-mile-long concrete pier. The lighthouse is not open to the public, but it can be viewed from cruise boats and other public areas. In addition to its history, the lighthouse is also known at wintertime for its natural and spectacular transformation into what looks like a majestic ice castle. Every year since 2010, the water that splashes up onto the lighthouse has completely frozen over. While this provides wonderful photo opportunities for tourists, those who are navigating the icy waters may find it a little inconvenient. In researching the lighthouse, I found an article from May 24, 2021 that said it may be up for sale soon. Those of you who have always wanted to buy a lighthouse, now is your chance. It is currently being offered to nonprofit organizations at no cost, but there is no if there's no interest in that, the property will be up for grabs. Today we have looked at all these amazing lighthouses in Ohio. Lighthouses have saved lives, protecting mariners as they approach rocky shores in the midst of fog and darkness. The open sea can be beautiful, but also eerie and disquieting. Thus, a flashing light in the distance has always been a symbol of hope and comfort. The stalwart lighthouse keeper tending the light during foul weather and his life of hardship simply adds to the mystique. The often remote location where land meets sea compounds the magic. Our goal in our video series in Ohio has been to highlight all the great places we have to visit in our state, from a botanical garden to an arboretum, a castle or a lighthouse. We hope you've enjoyed our programs. Please come and visit us at one of our branch libraries in Toronto, Brilliant, Tiltonsville, Dillonvale, Adena, Shappa, which is by the Fort Steuben Mall, or the main library in downtown Steubenville. And ch you can check out our uh, website at steubenvillelibrary.org. We would be glad to, to help you find any materials you're interested in uh, on lighthouses or any of the other uh, topics of the programs we've done. and. Um, We hope you have enjoyed your time.